Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahabatihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yaumiddin. Allahumma la 'alma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal 'alimul hakim. Allahumma 'allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima 'allamtana wa zidna 'ilma. Allahumma anzal 'alaina bi hikmatika wa anshur 'alaina bi rahmatika ya dzal jalali wal ikram. Wa sallallahu 'ala sayidina Muhammadin wa 'ala alihi al kiram wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al 'aliy al 'azim. So first and foremost, uh, I would like to thank all of the participants that come and join uh, our webinar series in this Friday evening. So uh, here in this uh, our first session for the new semester, we have with us uh, Dr. Muhammad Razif Jamaluddin, who will be our speaker in this uh, evening session. So in uh, this today's session, uh, we are going uh, to briefly discuss as well as explore the topic of uh, get to know the CBSAM, which is the covariant SAMs uh, in the regards of the hospitality graduate research. So as you already uh, know that there are various uh, statistical analysis that can be used in uh, the uh, postgraduate research. And one of the most used uh, statistical analysis is the structural equation modeling. So in this session, we are going to focus on the first uh, structural equation modeling, which is based on the CB, which is the covariant based uh, structural equation modeling. So we also have a schedule in maybe uh, in the future webinar also uh, on focusing on another type of structural equation modeling, which is uh, using the PLS, which is the partial least square structural equation modeling. So uh, I hope that uh, this session will be fruitful and beneficial for all of the participants. Uh, so with that, I would like to hand over uh, the session to Dr. Razi Jamaluddin to begin uh, this uh, sharing session in this evening. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Azmin. Uh, first of all, uh, assalamualaikum and good afternoon, everyone, especially to the students from New ITM from the Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management. Uh, before I begin, let me introduce myself. I'm, I'm Muhammad Razia Jamaluddin. Um, selamat datang, eh? selamat datang, selamat petang, as well as I see uh, students from Philippines, Sembang Buhai, and also from Indonesia. Salam siang. And um, yeah, Mumbai, everyone. So I see here. Um, okay, this is a national uh, sharing session, international sharing session. I thought it's just a domestic sharing session, but never mind. Um, actually, uh, this is one of the tough tasks given to me for understand for um, you know uh, sharing with all of you about this uh, covariant based uh, ACM. So, which is, I think, uh, quite, you know, uh, people people quite scared when you want to run this uh, analysis. And in fact, this is not really popular as compared to other type of other form of analysis. And in fact, we have like, we call it as second generation uh, statistic. So the first one, the, the one that is really popular, like multiple regression and all the correlation type of analysis. But this time we look into the uh, structural equation modeling. Okay. So before we begin, so uh, may I know how many of you plan to run CBSEM here? Just just by you know uh, providing, uh, just click the reactions over there. Hafiz, Hafiz, do you really want to go for uh, ACM? Actually, if you ask me, I also feel you know scared at the first uh, at first when I want to run this ACM. And in fact, I went to various workshops. It's not only one workshop. I went to four workshops, you know, four SEM workshops. And then I bought about three books for SEM. I downloaded two or three books and then watching like more than uh, 50 hours of SEM YouTube video. So that means how 
you know how uh, um, how hard work you need to have you know you need to be sorry you need to be the kind of efforts that you you have to put when you want to run SEM but at the end of the day it's you know uh, worth it because uh, you know about uh, this really uh, tough uh, statistic tools and then you mastered it and then you can run it and you can uh, share it with others okay i hope you can also learn it and then it is an investment to yourself i would say that sometimes people go for uh, you know iron man something like they go for decathlon but this one is the endurance that you can try to yourself okay let me share the screen so i have to um, maybe switch screen because i need to also show uh, videos or maybe uh, some papers eh, that discuss about acm Okay, um, so this is the topic that, that I propose. So I propose get get to know CBSEM because uh, I think uh, maybe other people who master PLS can explain better than me about this, uh, you know, PLS SEM. So let me try to just uh, share with you about this CBSEM. Okay, before we begin, the first question that always comes to our mind is that why, when to use CBSEM? I don't want to dive into the why, but when, okay? So when you, okay, let me share okay, this one. Okay, when you look at um, the, you know, the discussion about SEM, especially by the statistician, so actually when we go to SEM, by that we, should, we, we should start with the four worldviews, you know? Usually we, uh, our research is driven by these worldviews, for example, most of us, especially in the social science research, we we always go for this. When we refer to Creswell 2009, I'm not sure about you, but uh, during my time, I, I referred to these uh, four worldviews. Then I think uh, for, for me, uh, it is maybe matched with my type of research, you know, post-positivism, where, uh, so this is the, you know, the, the thing that we want to do. For example, so we want to determine ideas, then uh, do some sort of reductionism, empirical observation and measurement, and finally theory verification. So this, you know, this uh, dictate sort of like dictate you on what you want to do for the analysis. Okay, for example, and from this, when you look at the uh, the discussion by Laurie and Gaskin, twenty fourteen, so you can see that. So I also uh, put here the reference that you can refer later. Okay. So here, you can look at PLS, uh, either you want to run or for PLS or SEM or CBSEM, okay? So for this, so there are several uh, dimensions that uh, they covered. For example, uh, so you can read here for a while about the preferable uh, uh, for PLS, why PLS? So here you can see that for formative factors, this one is easier. Formative meaning you have um, you, you, you don't have the uni, sorry, you have the unidimensionality um, variables. So for example, you have three independent variables that you need all of them together to, to, to see, to examine the effect toward the dependent variable. But what we have so far, we sometimes we look at three different variables. So A might affect B. B, sorry, A might, uh, sorry, IBA might affect IB, uh, BV, B, the dependent variable. IVB also might affect BV. IVC also might affect DV. But uh, that is, but for formative, IVA, B, and C all together are required. So that's why we call it as formative. So that's why it is quite difficult actually when you want to run it through, through um, uh, CBSM because most of the time when we run, uh, we run. Uh, the, the SEM, you use reflective, not formative. Okay, and then uh, for the uh, testing alternative models, so this one, why we use CBSM because of the, uh, it has this model estimation. So that's why it is preferable because it provides model fit statistics for comparison because you may have several models. Usually when people run for SEM, so they, they need not to say that uh, are they, do they are given options or they are given, you know, uh, sort of like uh, they, they can, you know, something they can run for several models. No, but they have to. 
sometimes they have to run se several models to see which one has the you know which which one has the model fit or which one has the highest um, we call it uh, fit indices. Okay, so when you can see here, uh, one of the, uh, the other things that may may attract people or not may attract may hinder people to run uh, not to run CBSM because of this small sample size. So for CBSM, it is unreli unreliable if it does not converge. If it does converge, often will not converge. So this is what La Laurie and Gaskin found or shared in 2014. Okay. So before before we start off with SEM, so we, you need to have this in mind. Okay. You need to have a predefined model in the CFA. So it must be strongly supported by theory of previous research. Remember, whatever you do, especially in CBSEM, it is guided by the previous findings or underpinning theory. So that's why sometimes you, your, your findings were based or were argued because of it does not match with the previous findings. Okay? That's why it is important for you to have intensive reviews of literature. To, to, sub, to support the uh, model uh, specification. Okay, next, before you go further, you have to run the content validity and pilot test. So the uh, reliability. So the content validity, so this is important, especially in the panel expert uh, reviews. So you have to make sure the questionnaire that you have should be understood by the sample. So you don't you don't want to have issue during the data collection. So because sometimes you cannot revert or you cannot turn back time. So meaning you cannot go back to the data collection or you cannot add on data because of the mistake that you have done during the content during the panel expert reviews. Okay, so that's why these two uh, steps are important to uh, the the this social science research, and then because of Sometimes we have issues uh, during the first stage of running the data. So that's why we sometimes, this is, uh, there, there are several authors or statist uh, statisticians uh, suggested that we uh, do this, you know, we have uh, adjusted sample size, even though sometimes you refer to several, um, uh, several uh, citations like Craig and Morgan, Channel 84, or Roscoe, uh, same uh, numbers, or maybe you use several tools to, uh, to determine your sample size, but sometimes you have to inflate it. You have to uh, add, uh, or you call it adjust it a little bit, because sometimes you might have issues that you need to remove uh, that case, okay? So that's why before you go further, like what Holtzman and Vezu 2011 said, so we have, whether we like it or not, you have to check for the missing data, especially the outliers, and also run for the multicollinearity. So this one, if you want to look at it, you can find uh, lots of resources in the uh, YouTube that discuss about this too. And it's quite easy, so it's quite straightforward, but uh, one of the most important thing is sometimes you have to remove cases. So if that is the case, uh, sometimes you have about 400 and then you have to remove about 40, 80. So, so that's why it is quite you know, worrying to us if we have to do that. So that's why it is important to go back, you know, to make sure that you run a proper content validity and pilot test. Okay, so getting started. So when you want to start ACM, when you, you download it, and then uh, you uh, install, sorry, not say download, you install the software in your PC, usually you will see this command. Sorry. Okay. It looks like uh, lots of command, right? Or uh, tools here. But it's not really difficult, actually, because this one, sometimes you, really, you need to use about, uh, I think, 10 here, and also uh, several commands, important commands in this ACM. Okay, maybe we can refer to this YouTube on how to use it, just, just to you know, acclimatize uh, this uh, ECM. Let me stop share for a while. Okay. So this is uh, one of the video, I think quite simple, straightforward for you to understand about uh, 
this yeah so hopefully you can listen to the audio this one is about 40 uh, 20 something minutes but i will you know skip some content here okay so this one so you you have to use so before that i need to okay you need to also use your um spss to run the uh, acm because it is the same company so that's why it is important for you to have both the uh, SPSS as, as well as uh, AMOS, okay? And then, uh, okay, when you have your data and what you need to do, okay, you have to, uh, you know, open open the uh, this AMOS and then start drawing. First, you need to draw first. So, so this, uh, he shows about how. Actually, I want to draw here, but because using Zoom, it's quite, you know, difficult to change interface. So that's why, I, uh, I use the video that I think I also will use the same thing. For example, this one is already done. Yeah, sorry, okay, before that, here. Where, where is it? Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, so first you need to, uh, you know, draw the observe variable. Something like this, you know, you need to use the command here. So just click. So you know, not really difficult. And then for you, this one for rotating. So so you can also refer to your data set. So this one that you import from SPSS. Okay, and then how to put it? It's not really difficult. Okay, this one is for you to select objects, to move object. So the lorry here, the truck here to move object. So this one to, okay, let us see. If you want to move object, then, so you have to, you know, click your cursor and then move it to other areas. So here, and you can also uh, duplicate objects. You can duplicate how many times you like. So uh, on the canvas. And then you can also change, you can rotate it to, uh, to top, to the left or to bottom. Okay, so now let us move a little bit. Okay, how to enter the data into the ACM? You and you want to add variable? Just click this here and put it here and click the cursor. Okay, then you get more variables. So the Latin variable. Okay, so now, so let's see how he put it. Okay, I have to, okay, you can draw. Uh, this one is a formative. And you can rename it, just click, uh, double click here, renamed it. Okay. Okay, this one you must key in the observe variable. And then when you want to put the uh, okay, let's go to this. Just click, hold your cursor and move it to the okay. To the Latin variable. Very really straightforward. Okay. So this one, and then there are certain there are other things also that you need to do. Let me uh, share with you. You can rename the items very easy, straightforward. Okay. 
Okay. So this is the first step. And then uh, this one is also a must. To draw, uh, observe. Okay, and then uh, and, and observe. So this is a must. So all of this. So every observe must have uh, this one, an observe variable. Okay. So basically, this is the, the way to, to what you call it. Okay, and then uh, if you want to run it, so you can select. So what are the uh, maximum likelihood? So this one is also depends on the suggestion by the statistics, statistician. Okay. And, and then you can also select. So what kind of analysis here and how many threshold? Okay. Something like that. Okay, now I stop here. Let me stop sharing and we move on to my PowerPoint that I prepared for you. Okay. Okay, so this is what. So meaning, if you want to use the SEM, actually, you need first you need to have the data. Uh, uh, you have to enter it in the uh, SPSS, and then you must have a MOS software, and then you need to draw according to the variable that you have. Okay, and then. So when to use uh, what factors to consider when you want to run SEM? Number one. So you have to make sure that the research objective is theory testing and confirmation. So that's why this is confirmatory factor analysis because all the factors that you gathered were done based on the previous theories or based on the previous findings. You gather them and then you want to test whether they can be together. Then you want to look at the effect towards dependent variable. So that's why we call it as the causal relationship derived from previous findings. Okay, and then why we run this ACM? Because we we our role here is to reject null hypothesis. For example, in every alternate hypothesis, we have null hypothesis. So meaning by hook or by crook, we want to reject null hypothesis. That's what we want to do. But sometimes we cannot do, we cannot achieve that. So example for this one hash one. For example, this is H1. So you have to, you want to keep all of this, but you have to sacrifice, for example, this one. So this is your, uh, you know, this uh, measurement model. Okay, for example. And then sometimes because of you want to keep this, you want to reject the null hypothesis, you need, you have to sacrifice your items. Yeah. So maybe you have to sacrifice, for example, you have like, uh, six, seven variables, then you have to sacrifice two or three. So that's why sometimes we will put more than five variables. Why? Because at the end of the day, because of to reject the null hypothesis, they need to sacrifice the items. But make sure that uh, the, the final number of items should be more than three. Okay. So this is uh, the, the basic idea. Eh? So why we have, well, why we want to run uh, uh, CBSEM? Okay, and then we run everything together. So like this, for example, eh? and then sample selection and sample size. Okay, the uh, one of the uh, condition to run uh, the ECBSEM is the number of cases that you should have. For example, this one is the observed variables. So how many you want to have? For example, how many you have? So this one, you have, maybe this one, I have about forty. So um, most, not to say most, but uh, there are several departments in statistician uh, say that if you want to, uh, the sample size for ACM should be 10 times the number of observed variables. So if you have 40, then you must have 400 samples. So something like that. Something like that. So this is what uh, Osborn and Costello, Nonali, and uh, Palin, 1978. And then you have to ensure you need to you you can you are able to collect data within the specific duration because we are in non contrived setting right so because we want to ensure the consistency of the data because sometimes people might change the perception or the behavior over one month or over night so that's why it is important for us to to you know 
to ensure everything is in place. Okay, and then, okay, this is the one that I mentioned earlier, the fitness index. So this fitness index that make uh, our life miserable for CBSM, uh, just so to speak. Eh? Okay, because of, you have to ensure that you must, you know, you must uh, follow or your, your result should be in, in this threshold. For example, the, you have, we have three types of, uh, we call it as a model fits, okay, the index category, the absolute fits, uh, fit measures, the incremental fit measures, as well as the parsimonious fit measures. Okay, so this one, we, we require this. When you want to run the SEM, every time you run, you have to report these values. And it must, for example, like this, if you have to, if you need to get more than 0 0.9, then for model fit, everything here must be uh, with this within the threshold. But uh, this one from Dash and Paul uh, 2021. So this is early, earlier, but if you, before this, so we can just uh, refer to not so many, uh, what do you call it, the index category or the model fit. For example, like Awang 20, uh, 2012, I went to his workshop and he mentioned about this. So about um, maybe around six, uh, six uh, index that you have to report and you have to make sure that the level of acceptance within this value or above the value, for example. Okay, and he also provides suggestion. So the good fit. So we want to have this because you want, if let's say your model can achieve all of this, then people feel, you know, confidence to use or to cite or to reuse your model in the future for that kind of thing. Eh? Okay, and then, so the basic step in uh, CBSEM, number one is to have the model specification. So you have the one that I mentioned earlier, we have to draw it, draw and name it, something like this. So you have draw first without running any covariance. Just, um, you know, put the model, put the model in one canvas, something like this. And you can also run the model fit. Okay, but somehow it doesn't have, it doesn't carry any, uh, any values. Okay, and then from there, from here, so we have uh, the the next step is to to identify to to run this model identification. So or we call it as initial measurement model. First, because why? Because we have to familiarize with the fitness index. Okay, for example, like this. So this one is similar to BEV, similar to this BEV here, similar. But what we do, so we want to acclimatize with this uh, one uh, variable in our study or framework. Then you have the initial measurement model and you see the index here. And when you go to uh, the uh, model uh, estimates, then it will provide you with this. So what can you do to strengthen? For example, you see this. Okay, then to strengthen, and then uh, the ACM will suggest, for example, you change the parameter before this here, the parameter E9, then change to other. BE7 is the parameter, then you change to BEV, BEV1. And then same goes to here. So change the parameter from S1 to here S1, and then change to S3, but because this is the uh, the result, and then also to have the, what do you call it, to uh, this one, to match, connect this to an observed variable, which is um, E27. In. So this one to strengthen. Why? Because of this issue, modification indices is very big. So that's why they say we, we can connect this to reduce the modification indices. So this one is all, uh, the command or the output from ACM. So you just follow the steps, okay? And uh, this one is easy. And if you look at, if you refer to any uh, YouTube videos, I think you can follow. Okay, that is the first one. You have to do this, these steps for every of, everyone, uh, every single, uh, the variables that you have that you draw in your canvas. 
So, uh, so meaning you must have two files. So this is the first file and then another file for this only. So maybe you, after you draw, then you uh, remove here. So you must, so that's why I say in SEM, you must, you must have patience. So sometimes you need to, you know, duplicate the files, like seven files, just for initial measurement model, like this, one, two, three, four, you know, three, six, seven, seven files. Then uh, after you delete, after you draw this one, then you have to delete uh, six uh, variables. Then uh, you have to reopen the file and delete other variables because you want to set for this, you want to run this uh, initial measurement model. Okay. Next one. After everything is done, then we move to the next one, which is we combine again. So uh, sometimes you have to redraw again. So this uh, covariance, and then you you have to put you know correlational path to all variables that you have. So we don't want to set the path yet, but this one we call it as correlational path. So this. So if you look at this, so these are all derived from the previous step, all the correlational path here. And then same goes to here. So this one is new. So we have to make sure these two arrow, the double headed arrow here, should be pointed to all variables, like from BEV to all. BEV must have uh, arrows to BPS. Uh, so for example, this one, uh, I named it as BPS ABL. So for example, like this, okay? Okay, and then what you need to do next, you have to look at the model estimates, the fitness index. Okay, so these are the estimation and model fit. So lots, right? So lots of, uh, you know, outputs that you have to check. And this one is in, in one, uh, you know, in the uh, vertical, no, not like this, eh? in the horizontal is a vertical, eh? arranged in a vertical way but I cut and put it here. But to simplify your work, uh, when I went to one of the workshop, uh, the uh, facilitator provide me with this. And then uh, we can uh, copy and paste this command to the measurement model. So you can put this copy and then you can put in the measurement model, something like this. Oh, I have to, maybe I stop sharing. Okay, you can put here. So you, uh, you open the text box and then you paste, and then it should be positioned in the, within the canvas, in the canvas, okay, like this. So the beauty of this is that when you run, for example, you run it. Okay, so I put okay. Okay, then you can see the value here. So you don't have to check for the values at the, why, why I cannot see my, so the output, you don't have to refer to the output. Okay, so the output should be here. here. Okay, you don't have to refer to the output because here, like the model fit, and then you have to find it, you know, like you, can you read everything, uh, you know, like every time you run, then you have to refer to this output. So it's quite uh, irritating, right? So that's why uh, I, you know, I thankful, I feel uh, thankful to the facilitator for, you know, making my life easier during my study before. So meaning what you can do, like before this, okay, let me, okay, here. So when you paste it here, then it will also offer. So you can see here. So the, is, can, can, are you achieving the threshold for the SEM? Okay. And then, okay, then we move on to, let me stop sharing again. So we have to refer because we what whenever you want to run the SEM, you must have uh, the fitness indexes that you you use. 
So that's why you have to refer to uh, some statisticians. Like this, I refer to Awang and several other. So yeah, I use this one for Awang 2012. Our uh, uh, Malaysian. Eh? Okay, for example, when you put it like this, then you can put in the canvas. And it also provide values every time you run the SCN. Okay. So it's, it looks easy, right? So you draw it and then you name it and then you put all the data here in the latent and observe variable and then run. Look at the fitness index. It looks a very straightforward analysis, but actually there are lots of other things that you have to do. For example, the first one, you cannot, if let's say your uh, model is not fit, for example, all the indexes that you have is below the threshold like this. Okay, not fit. So meaning if you present it, definitely if you send the paper to uh, Scopus or even non-Scopus index, also they do, they will reject, they will reject this paper because it does not follow the, the right way to do the analysis. Okay. So what can we do? So that's the question. Can we do, uh, can we uh, amend or modify this? Can we change this output? Yes, because this ACM, Remember just now I mentioned to you about the first one here. So we will do reductionism because of the theory verification. And in fact, uh, there's other, I forgot one more letter, letter we will I, I, we will reach there. Okay. May I stop this now? Okay. So that's why when you have this. What you need to do, so you have to start modify the model. So this is where your life is interesting, where you skip. You, that's why I said you have to modify several models. Then you have to select which one is the best model that gives you the best output and uh, index that also uh, within the uh, threshold that you used. Okay, for example, number one. But uh, luckily, so we can also refer to several scholars or statisticians that uh, give us the tools or the steps for us to, you know, to modify or to amend or improve the model. For example, like this. Uh, to risk, uh, because of why, um, why we have problem with model, uh, this is what Kenny mentioned. And to re-specify the model, Kenny suggested improving the model fit by A, examine the factor loadings and error variances, and B, evaluate measures of standardized errors and modification indices. So how to do it? So you have to delete low loading factor. For example, like this, you have to look at the loading factor. If your loading factor here is less than 0 0.6, then you may Delete it. So you delete it, this one. So no longer appear for the next analysis. So that is one, one suggestion. Okay. And then you also need to check for the average variant extracted. So you refer to the uh, output just now, and then you can delete for, for if let's say the whole uh, items achieve less than 0 0.5. So the one I will share with you better. Eh? Okay. And then Ping uh, 2009 suggested dropping the item with largest measurement error. So the best solution to increase AVE rather than deleting and replacing cases. So that's why I say it, it, it is almost impossible for you to replace cases. So what you can do, you can delete cases. You can delete the items. Okay. And then uh, Kenny also mentioned that for every observed variable, so you must have at least um, Sorry, latent variable, you must have at least five or more indicators. So sometimes some of them even mention that at least three, three or more, then uh, it, can, uh, the, it can represent the dimension. So if let's say you have satisfaction, if you only have uh, at the beginning just now, like this, so the BBL we have six, seven, for example, we have six. Now we remove one then we left with five uh, items. So meaning it is still uh, valid for us to run the analysis. So you can delete one more, you have four, still valid, but you cannot delete below three. So you must have at least three. So
So because of you want to save, uh, if not, then the, the, the uh, dimension that you have, the variable that you have is not valid. And then you have to explain the process. For example, this is what you need to do. You, you, can, uh, you can delete or you can you know, uh, put the covariance path, but then you have to explain the, what call it, the process. For example, when you delete, you delete the item because of loading factor is less than 0 0.6, you have to explain. Maybe you need to put in table, then you explain, okay, this item were, were deleted because the loading factor is less than 0 0.6. Or sometimes you delete because of the low loading factor to avoid low AVE. And then look at the fitness indexes. Still low, still low, still less than 0 0.9. So not enough. So this is one of the model. You cannot get, usually in social science, it's quite hard for us to get, uh, you know, for the first run, you get this, uh, you know, fit. Perfectly fit in the uh, perfectly fit model, okay, and then you have to try. So let then let us try again. For example, like this uh, modi uh, modification indices. So we refer to sometimes you have to refer to like more than uh, in fact like forty yeah forty uh, M modification indices just to see which one you can establish a covariance path. Then this one, for example, so this is not the same. Output, okay, but this is what I, I, I would like you to maybe in the future when you use it, then you can refer to uh, modification indices. And then from here, you can establish, you can delete. And sorry, you can establish modification in that uh, covariance path like this. So we connect the two, uh, you know, this one is now something like this. So you have to connect like this E1 to E4. Okay, the estimates here. Okay. So that will be uh, other tools that uh, we can have. Okay, if still, when you refer to the model, still below the threshold, what we can do, we can run again for another round. So you have to run until you get the best one. Sometimes you cannot get 0 0.9 until forever. But what you do, you have to get the best one. And then you need to have, uh, you know, abundance of, uh, what to say, not abundance. You need to have support. Support that this model is the, you know, the, the best one, or maybe you must have the citations that say, okay, whatever that you have here should be okay. But somehow because of the, that's why I say, SEM is more, maybe people say rigor or robust because of the, you know, the, the, the process and also the indexes like this. So there are many ways, like sometimes delete item to increase goodness of it, even though still uh, we are, what we call it, exit 0 0.6, but you have to delete it because it may increase the, uh, your, your model fitness. Okay. And then another thing that you have to do here is you have you you need to also check for the convention, conversion validity and reliability. So here I got this one from uh, during my my um, during the, the workshop that I attended. And then sometimes I think this one you can get from internet, uh, this table, uh, because statistician love to share. So you can look at it. Uh, and then, for example, like this, okay, you just, you have to, you have to take the figures and you have to put it here. And then it will run for you. And then it will also share the validity concerns. Okay, so this is also uh, important uh, steps for us. And after you run this, then when you put here, in the conversion validity and reliability, you have to run by using other, other tools, you know, like all, uh, this reliability. You need to go back to the ACM and put this tree again to, to see the uh, reliability test. Then the AVE by using 
the this tool okay and this is uh, actually this is my final slide because so i know it's quite you know uh, quite confusing eh? to to teach all of you here by using slides by right it should be by by you know uh, de maybe demonstration or maybe we have workshop but i think i'm not the right person to to deliver the workshop maybe other person a statistician eh? but in order for you to check for discriminant validity so so this is the final step so you have to check for the discriminant validity so this one because of the suggestion by Fornell and Locker uh, that suggest, uh, suggested the correlation between construct must not exceed the average variance extracted so this one you have to find uh, another uh, you have to you know draw this, this table and then you have to put all the constructs that you have and then with, with the you know uh, value this value and then uh, as stated by awang 2005 the rule of thumb should be more than 0 0.85 okay so this is uh, the what do you call it the uh, the thing that we have to do for the confirmatory factor analysis okay but after this what you need to do is to run because i think this is too much uh, too i mean uh, i think too many information that i share with you but for the first part um, we have to run for the for this and sometimes for the next one after you have model fitness then the next part will not be as difficult as the first part just need to establish the uh, the reflective or formative errors okay and then uh, let me share with you like uh, for example how how do you want to do this you know are you confident to run acn so that's the question for instance if you look at um, where is it okay if you look at um, youtube there are lots of you know materials or resources that you can refer for example this is one and i also refer to where like i mentioned earlier like more than 50 videos i watch for running this to understand and not only that you have to go to the uh, workshops or maybe uh, to the courses so for the workshop that i attended so it is a two days workshop then but somehow still you need to have more you know hands on so that's why you have to run it and then you have to test uh, many times so this is one of the of the website or, or the or the youtube uh, that you can refer and i know nowadays people always refer to youtube to understand you know to help them understand more uh, things in life eh? okay and then what else then eh? let me check what else i have here okay um and also okay let me share this okay so finally yeah, for when you do this so you need to remember uh, for acm usually uh, we want to have we want to you know we want to save or we want to keep our items as many as much as possible but at the end of the day because of here because of this thing um, Yeah, because of this reason, you need to, you know, you need to uh, delete the items because of you want to make sure that uh, you can reject. So you can reject the hypothesis, null hypothesis. Sorry, I have problem with my cursor. Okay. 
Okay, so I think uh, that's all eh, for, for me eh, and Dr. Azmin. So I, I, I thank you to all of you for listening. So maybe I say uh, my final words, I think maybe uh, it is quite difficult for you to understand in the first uh, session. So what you can do is that uh, you first uh, remember uh, this thing, you can refer to the paper that I share with you here, and then you can also make sure this, this two, these two things before you run the SEM. And after that, for to, to get start to, to get to know SEM, I think all of you can do it because like myself, I also have, you know, when I try to run it at first, also for me, I look when I look at it, it's quite you know, impossible for me to run the SEM. But at the end of the day, when you keep doing it, and then when you keep, when you you have to put efforts, refer to the uh, to the resources, materials. If you have to buy books, buy books, and then uh, you have to try, keep trying. Yeah. Okay. So that's all for me. Thank you, Dr. Azmi. Okay, thank you, Dr. Muhammad Razif uh, Jamaluddin, for the uh, sharing session just now. So we have. Uh, several questions in the chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we have chat box here. So from Hana Satar, usually what is the price for the workshop, SEM workshop? Uh, okay. Actually, for the price for the workshop, it depends. Eh? It depends on how many days and what kind of inputs that they will give you. Because you know, the one that I attended, so... Uh, I think about uh, 200 ringgit, 200 ringgit, the first one. And the second one, I think about 50 ringgit. And I, I, another, I, I have various, and in fact, sometimes when you go to, you go to a uh, conference, they also provide seminar or workshop on, on ACM. So meaning, but somehow, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the, the input is quite similar, so that's why you need to find other because they have like the basic ACM, intermediate, and advanced. Usually, we stop at basic. We don't go for intermediate because it's quite impossible for us to understand uh, within the two days. But what I would say, it you know the the first workshop that I attended, it opened uh, my mind of whether I can do it or not like this because you know bef before that it, it is in the lab, so everybody is in front of the PC, so easy for us. If you say you have question, then you can ask. Uh, the facilitator. So like this, uh, just to show to you, uh, if let's say you want to do it, then uh, you, you have to put efforts. So that's important. Okay, another question from Azrul Azmi. Salam doctor, thank you for the sharing. I just want to know whether we need to report every feed in dices produced in the analysis. Uh, no. No, actually no. Actually, you, you must state uh, your sources. Like, like uh, I think the easiest one, you find those with the high citation. Like myself, I, I, why I cite Awang 2012? Because I attended, uh, when I attended uh, the workshop, so it mentioned during the workshop about, okay, you can uh, cite Awang. And then when I, I look at the, you know, the citations, quite, you know, made quite numbers. Side our so meaning not to say every everything, but the most important thing is that you must uh, you must use the most uh, you know important one like like I mentioned earlier. Uh, for example, you must have the absolute fit, incremental fit, and parsimonious fit at least one. But usually people will 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 you know will report the RMC, GFI, AGFI, CFI, TLI. And also, uh, the other one, you call it as the parsimonious fit. So that is a must. Okay, then uh, is it better to use SEM compared to analysis like multiple regression? Actually, it depends. Uh, I cannot say that this one is good or this one is bad, okay? Uh, which one is preferable or which one is the best one. Actually, it depends on uh, your, uh, what I call it, your objective. So for example, if you want to run multiple regression and multiple regression and you look at the linear, so look, the linear relationship, for example, it's very straightforward from independent variable to dependent variable, you don't have to run ACM. And if you have independent variable and one mediating variable, also maybe you don't have to run ACM. 
right? But you have a complex, so that's why we have a complex um, relationship. Let's say you have about four mediating variables, uh, and then uh, you want to, you know, you want to because they are because one one and variable will have about five to five to eight uh, items for the questions in the questionnaire. So if let's say you have about eight, then you you have around fifty to sixty. So who will use it? Who will utilize your study in the future? If let's say to understand satisfaction, or you must understand ten symptoms. So people want to make our life easier, right? So we want to have like, okay, how do you want to to understand people who satisfy with the product? So your model state that we you need you need to look at three. Okay, three items. So meaning people in the usually what uh, the SCM would like to have is that we want to ensure that the relationship remains even though even though with small uh, small items. Yeah. So that is the main idea lah for for SCM. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Okay, there is no other question, I think. Yeah. So, so uh, I think that's uh, all the time that we have. So I just want uh, to mention that uh, for anybody that is interested in uh, doing their study and analysis using the uh, covariant based SM, so just I just posted in the chat box that UITM actually provided uh, uh, the software like IBM SPSS as well as IBM Amos uh, for the postgraduate student for free. So just uh, go to the website that I have posted in the uh, chat box uh, to, to download and as well to try uh, the uh, knowledge that you have learned today. So I know just like uh, Dr. Muhammad Razir has said, uh, in the first, uh, we are just trying to expose to you what is what uh, CBSAM is all about, as well as the interface using IBM Amos. So I hope that uh, in the future we are going to uh, be able to fully show you how to do it uh, step by step. So we also have uh, posted the attendance. Uh, please uh, I'll fill out the attendance and to get the. Uh, is certificate for this uh, session. So before we end, uh, can we take some uh, some photo uh, before we end our session? So can some of you open open the camera? We are going to take this photo. Okay, ready? Okay. okay, it's my one, two, three. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for uh, lending you some of your time to come to our webinar series. So in the future, we are going to be having uh, the next webinar series. We are going to post it in uh, the our own uh, WhatsApp group as well as in the Facebook of our faculty. So uh, I hope that uh, the information as well as the knowledge that has been uh, imparted by Dr. Muhammad Razif are going to be beneficial to all of you. And with that, uh, I hope we are going to see you again in our next webinar series. And Assalamualaikum and have a good evening to all of you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. See you. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Assalamualaikum. Um, ya, kamu diri-diri, karam paning.